going to transition here and take a closer look at part of the African slave trade, and in particular, this part of the journey called the Middle Passage. And so remember, we've got European slave traders coming down via ship and going first across the east coast of Africa and then eventually going inland to Africa to harvest slaves from a variety of native tribes, transporting them across the Atlantic Ocean. That's the middle passage point where they would arrive in Central and North America and the islands around the Caribbean where they would be sold into slavery. And then those goods that were processed as a result of slave labor would ultimately be shipped back to Europe. So we get this thing called triangular trade going from Europe to Africa, from Africa to the Americas and from the Americas back to Europe. And this clip that we're going to take some time to unpack and break down is from a film called Amistad. Amistad being the name of an actual historical slave ship. And if you have the time, I really want to recommend that you go back and watch the film in its entirety. It's an incredibly well done film. And at the same time, this passage or this portion of the film, something that I show in class each and every year, and inevitably it does two things. First and foremost, it really opens up students' eyes to the horrors of slave trade. And two, it's one of the things that inevitably students walk away remembering even years after the class is over. One of the things I like to tell my students in class about this film is once you've seen this and you've engaged with it, then your, your eyes and your heart are open. We can no longer claim ignorance when it comes to our understanding of the slave trade. As always, whenever we're dealing with things that are historically accurate, we run the risk of seeing content, whether it's video or photographs or maybe even audio clips of things that are graphic and sometimes have violence. And this film, and in particular this clip, is certainly within that category. So by all means, I want to give you an opportunity to look away if something that is violent, you often find disturbing, here's your, your heads up for you to turn away. Now, what I will say is this, history, in fact, even the present can be violent. And it's my belief that when we engage with these things, whether it's videos or photographs or audio, when we engage with these things, we do something very unique, and that is we actually pay tribute. We honor the people that didn't survive these historical events, and we also honor the people that did survive these historical events. So while you have every opportunity to look away, my encouragement to you is throughout this process and indeed throughout this course that you will step out with courage and engage with things that are dark and perhaps even violent so that we can have a better full understanding of history. Okay, in this first part of the clip, let me go ahead and unpack what you should expect to see. We're going to see a African in Africa. He is just outside the outskirts of his village where his wife and child and other villagers are. And very early in the clip, you're going to be seeing this African man taken from his family by other Africans. And indeed, that was part of what was happening with the African slave trade, that neighboring tribes, perhaps enemy tribes that were close by, would often capture and sell members of their enemy's tribe into slavery. That not only reduced the potential for further conflict with those tribes, but it also enriched the tribes that were involved in the trafficking of other Africans. So we're going to see this man captured from his African village, taken into custody, and then eventually brought to the slave ship Amistad. <laughs> I'm up now! 
You can imagine from seeing that clip the level of violence and darkness that is certainly part of this slave trade. Now, one of the other things that is really important for us to understand, you and I today, if we are working on a document on our computers, that's backed up. Long gone are the days of people typically losing things because of a power outage or battery running out or things like that. And here's why that's important when we look at this clip in particular. We have to realize that when this slave trafficking was happening, not only were these men being taken from the villages, but you also have to understand that it is the men, and in particular the elder men, who would tell that tribe the stories of their personal history, their tribal history, their ancestral history. And so not only do we have this horrific deed of these males and also females, but in this case, when it comes to the retelling of history, the males of the tribe being placed into slavery. So they not only lose these members of their tribe, but eventually you do that long enough. You take away enough men and elders from a tribe, there's no one left to tell the story of the ancestors and that tribe. And so we not only have the advent of transatlantic slave trade here, but we simultaneously have an absolute annihilation of, quite frankly, almost an entire continent's history when it came to the Africans being harvested and removed from Africa and placed in the slave trade. And I I really cannot overstate the magnitude of what slavery did for these Africans. Now, I want to jump back into our clip. And as we do, we've seen the African male being taken from his village, placed on the slave ship. And now I want to give you some insight about what life was like on that slave ship and that journey from the coast of Africa all the way to the Americas. Again, as a reminder, as a heads up, you're going to see some things that are very dark and also very violent. And I want to encourage you to really engage with this content. I want you to try to see things through the eyes of those that experience this historical event. And as you do, I want you to try to process it with your worldviews of our current time. And I want you to try to, as you engage, I want you to try to really get a feel for what this part of the journey from the West Coast of Africa to the Americas was like. In it, you'll see a couple different things in this clip. You're going to see the cramped quarters. There isn't much of living space at all. You're going to see the lack of food and provisions that the slaves were given. Often it was a handful of mush or what we might think of as like oatmeal or cream of wheat. They're often very times not only eating and sleeping in the same place, but they're also going to the bathroom and relieving themselves in the same place. So think of tight cramped quarters, lack of food, lack of personal space. And then on top of that, you're near starvation. You don't know what's happening to you. You don't speak the language of those that have imprisoned you on this ship and you are now crossing over the ocean. So let's take a look at this part of the middle passage in the film Amistad. Solo los que 
I think we can agree what we just took a look at was shocking, horrifying, and it would be terrible if that is the height of the violence and the darkness of the conditions. But in reality, that was only a very, very small slice of what life was like on slave ships. And so as we set up this next part of the segment, here's what was part of that journey when it came to life on deck. They had this, they meaning the the captors, the slave owners, had this delicate balance of not only having to keep order on the ship, lest they have a rebellion on their hands, but they also, to a certain extent, also had to discipline slaves, either because they posed a threat to the crew So you're going to see this horrific display of discipline on board the slave ship, something that is as brutal as brutality possibly can be when we see this young African man being whipped by his captors. And within the same clip, you're also going to see a a young mother with her infant child, and you're going to see what she does in order to escape this horrible situation that she's in. And I'll also say that when students look back on this particular unit and indeed this particular course within their journey as a high school student, it's this coming scene that inevitably tends to leave the lasting impact with students.
As I said, that's likely to be a clip that doesn't leave your mind anytime soon. And you can see that the filmmakers, I'm, I'm so honored and proud that they had the courage to bring audiences the authenticity of scenes like this. And you might be wondering that that young mother, what went into her decision of taking her brand new baby in her arms and simply diving overboard and and I think part of it is obviously not wanting herself or her child to experience the life of brutality that lied ahead for them and certainly for generations after them and I think the other part of it too understanding a little bit more about traditional African history is many Africans believed that upon their death their spirit their soul would return to their homeland and that other ancestor. So that certainly went into her thinking as well. As we take a look at this last clip of Amistad, we're going to take a look at the arrival of the Africans in the new world and how they are treated, how they are literally brought to an auction block, almost a precursor to how we would bid on a site like eBay or other things when we, as consumers, we would see something that we want and we would bid money and try to outbid others for that thing that we want. We unfortunately have this dark part of our history where we have human beings bidding on owning other human beings. And so here is this last part of the clip from Amistad. I hope you're going to find our journey in exploring this clip together worthwhile. And I hope a couple other things as well. I hope one, it gives you insight and the opportunity to honor those that were part of this historical event and this historical era in our nation's past. The other thing that I hope it really does is I hope that you continue not just with this task or this module or this course, but I hope that you will see that you are empowered as a young adult taking this course right now to right the injustices of our world today. And so I hope that you will understand that slavery still exists in our world, that there is darkness and evil in our world, and that you have the power in so many different ways, whether that's as a consumer and how you spend your dollars and making sure that you're not purchasing goods or services from companies that use slave labor to utilizing your voice and your vote. And even quite frankly, if you're not yet old enough to vote, 
still using the power that you do have to make a difference in your community whenever you see injustices happen, whether they're on this magnitude or much, much smaller. And so as we go forward, not just with this task or this module, I hope that you will be reminded often throughout this course that you have tremendous power at your fingertips to make a positive difference in the lives of those around you and that using that power is the difference between being a person who makes an impact in the world and a person who is merely a bystander in the world.